Demolent Kleitman is different from our previous study, Size Layer L, in that it's looking not just at the kind of ideas behind why we sleep and how sleep works, but it's particularly looking at dreaming. Now, its aims are to kind of try and find out more information about the actual processes of dreaming and how they relate to what's going on in the body at the time. So Azarinsky and Kleitman in 1953 had already found a relationship between REM during sleep and dreaming. They knew there was some sort of connection between rapid eye movement and between dreaming. And in 1957, Kleitman collaborated with Diamond on a study entitled The The Relation of Eye Movements During Sleep to Dream Activity, an objective method for the study of dreams. So this study was trying to find out if significantly more dreaming occurs during REM sleep than during NREM sleep, if there's a significant positive correlation between the objective length of time spent in REM sleep and the subjective duration of dreaming reported upon waiting, and if there's a significant relationship between the pattern of REM observed during sleep and the content of the dream reported upon waking. So they were interested in when dreaming occurs, they were interested in Is there a connection between how long REM goes on for and how long a dream seems to last? And finally, is there a relationship between the type of rapid eye movement and the content of the dream? So they took seven adult males and seven adult females and they observed them under lab conditions. So they got them into the lab rather than doing it at home or anything like that. They got them into the lab and they put them into a sleep study. Now you've watched some videos about sleep studies before, but essentially, as you can see in this picture here, you attach a whole bunch of different electrodes to the person's head um, and you observe their sleep. You film them, you do all sorts of different things while they're asleep. They sleep in a quiet, dark laboratory room after a normal day's activity. Um, So electrodes were attached near the eyes to register eye movements and on the scalp to measure measure brain waves during sleep. So I'm actually going to scroll back up here and you can see here how they were attached to um, the people. So there's some up here um, to measure how much the eyes were moving and there's some kind of further back to measure the type of brain waves that are going on. So frequently throughout the night they were woken up by a loud doorbell noise like bing and at exactly that moment they were asked to immediately record whether they'd been dreaming or not so were you dreaming uh yes or no and the content of the dream so were you dreaming and what was the dream about they were not told whether or not they'd been in REM sleep prior to awakening have a think about why that might be important why might be important that they don't know if they've been in REM sleep The reason for it is that if they knew they were in REM sleep, if they were woken up and said, you were in REM sleep, were you dreaming? They might, that might affect their answer. They might go, well, I was in REM sleep, so I I, I must have been dreaming. And then they'll say they were dreaming when maybe they weren't. So what did Demet and Kleitman find out? Well, REM periods were clearly observed in all subjects and occurred at fairly regular intervals. Now, that might seem really obvious to us, but remember, this is the 1950s, so there was a lot less known about rapid eye movement at that time. And participants reported significantly more dreams when awoken during REM sleep rather than during NREM sleep. So if they were woken up during rapid eye movement sleep, they had way, way more dreams. All right, they did have some during NREM, NREM, they did have some during NREM sleep, but not very many. There was a significant positive correlation between the length of time spent in REM sleep and the duration of dreaming. So if you spent more time in REM sleep, you would say your dream seemed to last longer. When participants were woken after just five minutes of REM sleep, they reported much shorter dreams than when they were woken after 15 minutes of REM sleep. So there does seem to be that link between REM, uh, rapid eye movement, how long that lasts for, and how long our dreams last for, or at least how long they appear to last for. There was also a strong correlation between the type of REM and the type of dream experience. Vertical REM was associated with dreams of looking up and down. Horizontal REM was associated with looking between objects. And periods of vertical and horizontal REM were associated with looking at close objects. Or periods of very little or no REM were associated with looking at far away objects. Now that seems quite a lot of information thrown at you, but actually when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. So if we think about vertical REM, Think about your eyes, kind of look straight ahead of you and uh, think about looking up and down. If you're looking at um, up and down, 
you want to look at something up, the eyes move up. Hang on, I'll get closer to the camera. If you want to look at something up, the eyes move up, and then they move down. Up and down. Okay? So that might be, for example, there was someone on a ladder, and I was looking up at them, and I was worried that they were going to fall down. You'd expect to see kind of the eyes going up and down, up and down. Okay? Horizontal REM was associated with looking between objects. So, for example, that might be somebody watching a tennis match. So they might have said, well, um, I was watching the tennis match and they were serving from one side to the other side, from one side to the other side, one side to the other side. And we would expect to see horizontal REM, side to side REM during that time. The others might be a little more complicated. Well, vertical and horizontal REM were associated with looking at close objects. So think about this. If something's really close to you, in order to see it fully, you need to look up and down. So if you take your hand and you place it in front of your eyes and try and look at the whole of your hand, you'll realize you have to look up and down and side to side. So vertical and horizontal REM is associated with looking at close objects. But periods of very little REM were associated with looking at far away objects. So if you maybe look out the window and look at something far away, then you'll notice that your eyes aren't moving very much because you can take the whole thing in, let's say the house across the street or a person far away, you can take the whole thing in without having to move your eyes very much. So lack of, so there seems to be this kind of link of what your eyes are doing to what you are looking at in a dream. So Demel and Kleitman had some conclusions. Well, they said REM and dreams are really closely correlated and there's some form of link between the two and dreams mainly seem to take place during REM sleep, and they appear to happen essentially in real time. You know, they're not happening kind of, you're not dreaming for five minutes and that seems to take 20 years. No, you're dreaming basically in real time.